Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The U.S. pays upwards of $70 billion annually to other countries in the form of aid. The top two are Ukraine and Israel. While the amounts are small, the U.S. also sends money called aid to France, Norway, and Tuvalu. Tuvalu? Tuvalu is an archipelago off the coast of Australia that boasts pristine beaches and diving. Technically, it is owned by Britain and the Crown, although on the books it is independent like Australia. This population is 11,300 and in 2022, we sent them $200,000. They have zero growth, one hospital, and the population is dwindling. The current aid system was implemented in 1961. Prior to this date, aid was provided for more specific uses, the aftermath of an earthquake or more often, food. There are over 20 agencies dispersing aid, with half being represented by USAID, including DOD, the Departments of Treasury, Agriculture, Navy, Army, State, HHS, FTC, etc. In other words, it is buried. The reason for the aid varies based on the receiving country. For example, while we had the prolonged war in Afghanistan, our government was simultaneously sending them the largest pot of money, aka aid. Or were they? Most often, our government declares that the reason for aid is to help the poor gain a foothold so as to rise out of their slack development. Yet, that never seems to happen. More people are hungry, more people are in poverty, and more money is sent. Not surprisingly, taxpayers footing the bills would rather the money was spent on America. But our government is run by stakeholders, and the officials we elect really do nothing. The illusion. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstandings. So, does the aid actually go to the country? As Ukraine aid has shown, the answer our DOD gave us is no. Congress secures money for Ukraine that is actually spent on industrial defense, Lockheed, Northrop, Raytheon, Boeing, etc. The same industrial defense that uses the money to build weapons and armaments which are sold to foreign countries like Saudi Arabia at a hefty profit. But the profit doesn't go back to the funding taxpayers, it goes to the corporate executives and shareholders. Free money. Some countries receive U.S. foreign aid annually, like Israel, Jordan, Ethiopia, Egypt, Nigeria, etc. In essence, U.S. taxpayers are paying the U.S. government to give their money to fund the confiscation of African resources. Those resources are then distributed to certain elite corporations to make a profit, a profit that is never given back to the taxpayers. They call it partnering for peace. On paper, for example, in 2021, Nigeria's GDP was $477.39 billion. Nigeria's poverty rate is 90%. In 2003, the poverty rate was 90%. In 2010, the poverty rate was 90%. The poverty rate is measured as those earning less than $2.15 per day. In 2022, the U.S. gave Nigeria $1.2 billion. The U.S. has been supporting Nigeria for 60 years. Obviously, the aid is not going to Nigerians. So where does it go? Here is USAID's puff paper. For six decades, USAID has built its reputation as the world's premier international development organization by partnering with more than 100 countries to strengthen communities and improve lives. Is Nigeria better off? This is just one example. The U.S. also gives Israel over $3.8 billion in aid annually. Israel's GDP growth rate is 6.8%. The comparable U.S. GDP growth rate is 1.9%. 
Israel's Jewish population is 7.8 million. Their GDP is $525 billion, giving them a per capita GDP of $67,300. Their tagline, Israel is one of the most resilient and technologically advanced market economies in the world. Its skilled workforce and concentration of venture capital allow the country to lead in innovative industries such as high-tech, clean-tech, and the life sciences. So why do American taxpayers support the Israeli population when they are much better off than Americans? U.S. aid to Israel is looked upon differently than any other nation. Aid to Israel has continued every single year since 1948. In 1948, the British mandate for Palestine ended, and Palestine was partitioned. It was viewed as an ethnic cleansing. Over two million Palestinians were forced into refugee status, and the U.S. became the benefactor of Israel aid. All under the guidance of Rothschild and Ben-Gurion. Today, Biden is securing a $14.3 billion aid package to Israel amidst an annual increase in aid to $4 billion. Before Ben-Gurion became the first PM of Israel, he worked at the Rothschild Vineyard as the head of the workers' union. Edmund Rothschild was the first Zionist to buy Palestinian land and encourage Bolshevik settlements as early as 1896. Not for free. Rothschild still owned the land on which the settlements were built and collected a tithe from the settlers. The wealthiest man in the world, Rothschild, effectively owned Israel. He demanded a tithe from his settlers and a tithe from America, which the government imposed on taxpayers in the inconspicuous package of aid. Contractually, Israel took that aid and bought military equipment from Lockheed, Northrop, Raytheon, etc. Sort of like double-dipping a potato chip. In 2023, Lockheed's value per share increased 30% over 2022. The top shareholders of Lockheed receiving dividend income include BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard. This is the Ponzi. Lockheed profits off the tithing of American taxpayers, yet the profits are not shared. Our esteemed government at work. By a Jewish national home, I mean the creation of such conditions that as the country is developed we can pour in a considerable number of immigrants, and finally establish such a society in Palestine that Palestine shall be as Jewish as England is English, or America American. Haim Weizmann, Balfour Agreement Creator in collaboration with Rothschild. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.